Hi everyone, my name is Megan. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a teething essentials and tips. <laughs> Teething is a very difficult part of having a young baby and it can start really young. So if you have started teething around three or four months and it can last until they're two and it's a really long process and it can be really difficult and there's little breaks in between. They get, they get some teeth and then they have a little break and then they get some more teeth. But teething is the bane of a mother's existence. And there's quite a few things that you can do to make it easier that are still natural and healthy and not just pumping them full of Tylenol every day. So I hope you guys find this video helpful and let's get right into it. So the first thing on my list is amber jewelry. When I first heard of this I was like there's no way that'll work and then I tried it and I was amazed at how much it helps. Like it was amazing. I will give amber necklaces to all of my children starting at three to four months. They'll each get an amber teething necklace and they'll wear it until they're done teething because <laughs> they're awesome and I am all for them. They're actually these little stones, and I think it's, it's Baltic, if that's how you pronounce it. Baltic stones, and the stones emit oils into the baby's skin that help with pain relief and also help prevent excessive drooling that comes from teething, which is actually super handy because babies drool a ton when they're teething, as you guys know. And that can cause other problems because when they have so much drool, and they swallow extra drool than they normally would, it makes their poop acidic and it causes diaper rashes and it can create even more problems that we really don't want. I love the amber teething necklaces. You really want to make sure that you get one that fits properly. So you want to measure your baby's neck. You don't want that one that hangs way down here. They're not supposed to be able to get it in their mouth. If it fits properly, they are very, very safe and I feel comfortable leaving it on my daughter 24-7. Sometimes people aren't comfortable leaving it on their babies at night. So one thing that you can do, I actually did this for the first couple months that she was wearing it, is I would just wrap it around her ankle and then put a sock on her so that it wouldn't fall off. So that way she's still getting the benefits of it, but it's not around her neck if you're a little scared of it. Although I think it works better the closer it is to like the source of the pain. So when they're teething, it works best if it's around their neck. If it's on their ankle, I think it, I mean, it still works, but I think it might not work quite as much. That is one thing I've heard before though. And then the next thing is have a ton of teething toys on hand. I have a whole bunch of different teething toys. It's nice for babies to have a bunch of different options for texture and all that stuff. So here's some of them. Here's, and these, these toys are just so cute. I love them. This one is one of my favorites because it has, it's mostly rubber. It has some wooden beads, this ring right here is wood and it also has cloth. So it's got like everything that Sophia loves chewing on. This one is just rubber and wood. I also got this banana toothbrush. It's a teething toy slash like baby's first toothbrush. And these bristles are actually pretty firm. And so she loves chewing on this with the bristles facing whatever teeth she's working on. It really seems to help her. And then now that she actually has a couple teeth, I brush them with this every night just so that she can get used to it and it helps clean those little teethers. I also have these binky clips. They are rubber, they're, they're teething toys. And I actually don't use them for binkies because they seem to be too heavy and they would just like pull the binky out of her mouth just from the weight of them. But they work amazing for clipping onto toys. So I would just put this around this toy and then I could clip it to her and then when she drops the toy, it won't fall on the floor of the car or wherever we're at. So I don't have to keep <laughs> getting it for her. Because she's at the age where she thinks it's hilarious to throw toys on the floor and then mom goes and fetches them. So I can just clip them right to her and she can't do that. And plus, these are actual teething toys. So she, she actually really loves chewing on these. And she likes chewing on the ends too. <laughs> so when they're not clipped to her, she chews on the ends more than the, the main part that's meant for chewing on. Here's another toy that, she, this was her favorite toy when she was younger. She's not a huge fan of it anymore, she just kind of lost interest. But when she was first teething, she loved chewing on these horns. They're kind of a rubber and these rings on the back. So this is a great like kind of first teething toy because it's like still interesting enough, interesting enough for them to look at and it makes noise and stuff. So she really liked this at first. And then I also have some different kinds of uh, squishy toys 
that these are meant to go in the freezer and then they get nice and hard and then they numb their gums from the cold. So I really like these. I also have some that are like keys on a ring and the tips of the keys are this material and you're supposed to freeze them and then they chew on that and it like numbs it from the frozen temperature. Sophia also likes chewing on like fabric type materials. So one thing that was really helpful is to take a washcloth and get it wet and wring it out and then go put it in the freezer and then let her chew on a frozen wet washcloth. And it was just enough of a different texture that she really liked it. And again, it was cold to numb her gums. So just having lots of options of toys so that they don't get bored. And when they're chewing on those toys, they're putting counter pressure onto their gums to help their teeth pop through. And that actually helps relieve the pain. It's much like when you're in labor and a lot of times counter pressure can help with pain management. It's the same thing with when they're teething and they're chewing on a toy and they're biting it really hard and it's, it's creating pain relief for them, which is kind of cool. And then another really handy thing is these frozen food feeders. This one is actually really great because it only has one hole at the end and it's sealed unless you squeeze it. So these are amazing for putting breast milk in for before they can eat solid foods, but they start teething before they can eat solid foods. So I would put frozen breast milk in this and then pop it in the freezer. And then as she chew on it, it would open that hole and she would get breast milk and she loved this so much. And then now, I, I mean, I still put milk in it, but sometimes I'll put applesauce or mashed bananas or any solid foods that's been mashed up, mashed or blended up. This one is actually her favorite now. It has a whole bunch of holes in it. And so her favorite so far is putting frozen strawberries in this. And she just chews on it until all the strawberry comes out through the holes. And she's been a huge fan of these. So now I'm one of those moms who gives my children binkies, but I try not to let them have them too much. I don't want them to get too dependent on them. But when she was teething really bad, I would just let her have her binky just to get through that really tough time. And then when she was feeling good, then it was a lot easier to kind of not have her, let her have it all the time. She is nine months right now. And thankfully she's actually weaned herself off of her binky completely. But having it for that first really, really rough teething stretch when she got her two bottom teeth in the same night, the binky was a lifesaver. And what goes along with, ha with letting them have the binky for comfort is to let them comfort nurse a lot. A lot of babies, when they're teething, it, it helps their teeth feel better, helps their gums feel better to nurse a lot. Sophia wasn't one of those babies who really liked that. She actually hated nursing when she was teething, which was a bummer because I would have been totally willing to just let her nurse like as much as she wanted, as long as she wanted during the day. But maybe the next baby will be like that. Just try it, try nursing your baby more and it might, even if they're not getting anything, I think just the nursing, same, it's similar to them sucking on a binky, but it just helps them be comforted. Make sure you have a really good baby carrier because when a baby's in pain, they just really wanna be with their mom. And it's actually proven that it helps relieve pain when a baby is like right with their mom and they're comforted. So if you have things that you really need to get done, get a, a really good carrier. I have two kinds of carriers. I have like a backpack carrier. It ha has like four different ways that they can ride in it. One's on your front facing out, on your front facing in, on your back facing out, on your back facing in. So there's a lot of different options with that one. And now that she's older, she really prefers that one. When she was younger, she preferred the wrap, but now it just doesn't work anymore. So I like having both kinds because different babies will like different ones and they'll like one better when they're younger and one better when they're older. But when they're feeling just really sick and their teeth hurt really bad, just put them in the carrier and just let them be with you. So as I said, babies drool a ton when they're teething. So have lots of bibs on hand. I have so many different kinds of bibs and she, when she's teething really bad, she'll go through all of these easy. So I highly recommend having bibs unless you want to change maybe clothes a gazillion times a day or leave them soaking wet. And then also when they're drilling a lot, it causes diaper rashes. So have a really good diaper rash cream. I actually make my own. I will. I made a video on how I make this recipe and I will link that in the description box below. But this is a waterproof diaper rash cream and it works really well. When she has really minor rashes, I'll just use coconut oil with some essential oils in it. But this is like 
my workhorse diaper rash cream. This is what I pull out when it's a really bad one or when I just really want to get rid of it really fast. And then also keep in mind that if you're cloth diapering and you're using a really good waterproof cream that you need to have some liners to put over your diaper. Otherwise, it'll create a moisture barrier over the cloth diaper. One of the best things I have found for like a natural medication for teething pain are these homeopathic teething medicines. I have a daytime oral pain relief and a nighttime oral pain relief. And these are absolutely amazing. I've tried the Camellia or Camilla tablets. They're these um, little things. They're these little things that are full of liquid, and you twist off the end and you squeeze them in their mouth. Those are quite a bit more expensive than these. These are actual little pills. There's a bunch of little pills in there, and they dissolve really fast. So you just put them in the baby's mouth, and they dissolve super fast. And there, there's a ton of these. There's 125 pills in each bottle, and each of these bottles is like four dollars. So they're a lot cheaper and I think they work a lot better. If she's just having a really, really rough day, I'll give her the daytime stuff. But I really don't use the daytime stuff too often. I mostly use the nighttime one. I make sure I give her one of these pills every 15 minutes for an hour before she goes to bed. And then if I have to go in there during the night, which is pretty rare at this point, I will take two tablets and give them to her because it's just like once during the whole night. So I'll give her two tablets and this really, really seems to help her sleep through the night. Here is another natural thing to help with the pain. This is a numbing oil. It has coconut oil, sunflower oil, vitamin E oil, chamomile, peppermint, clove bud oil. This is like all natural. And as you know, if you use essential oils like peppermint and clove are really numbing. So this really helps. One thing I like to do is when I'm using her frozen food feeder, if I'm gonna put applesauce in this, I'll mix a couple drops of this in her applesauce and then as she melts this, it like helps numb her gums even more than just having it frozen. Every little thing, even if it just creates a tiny little bit of relief, it, it really makes a difference. Like every little bit of relief you can give the baby is gonna help a lot. And I think that's all for my essentials. And you just have to keep in mind when you're going through this that this too will pass. Babies always go through phases where it's like really difficult and they're teething really bad or they have a terrible rash or they get thrush. Like something always seems to happen right when things are like going really smoothly, something else happens and it too will pass. And I've, I'm finally learning to not freak out every time something happens. Just be encouraged that this will be over soon. And I really hope this video was helpful and I will see you in my next one. Bye.